All right, so this evening, what I am going to talk about is how you can build your own personal bank with a whole life insurance policy. Sound like fun? Hopefully it is. I promise it will be as we get into the details. Uh, with that said, if you are thinking, what does it even mean to build my own bank with a whole life insurance policy? If this is relatively new to you, we'll get into exactly what that means and we'll look at a specific example of it as well. And then what we'll also cover is how you can use a whole life insurance policy, again, specifically the cash value, to generate income on a tax-free basis. So we'll cover three main things this evening. The first, we will start in the form of a question, which is, why do people get life insurance when they don't care about the life insurance? Number two, how can you use a whole life insurance policy like your own bank? If you have familiarity with real estate, you'll see there's a big relationship there, but we'll get into that. And then number three, how can you take tax-free income during retirement from a cash value life insurance policy? And really the goal of this presentation is just to set a foundation and show you show you how you personally can take advantage of cash value life insurance like big banks, like big corporations, and like a lot of wealthy families have for a long time. I'm actually going to pull up an example of a bank that we work with and you'll see exactly what they did and what their policy looks like. But first, let's go through some of the basics of whole life insurance. So we've got three, three colors here, blue, red, and green. Let's start with blue, that's the death benefit. So with a whole life insurance policy, the term death benefit, that's the life insurance. What you will see with the death benefit on a whole life insurance policy is that it will gradually increase over time. Now, when you die, if that life insurance policy is on you, that death benefit is paid to your beneficiaries 100% income tax-free. For example, if Denzel has a policy on himself, his beneficiary is his wife-to-be, something happens to Denzel, she gets that money 100% income tax-free, meaning no income taxes due on, on it. And that's the case with any type of life insurance as well with respect to the life insurance piece. Then in red, we've got the premium and PUA rider. PUA stands for paid up additions. I like to call it a cash dump in. We'll get into details around that. But what you'll find with both the premium and PUA rider, this is money that you pay into your policy. These are your deposits. And here's a question. When you hear the word whole life insurance, and the word premium, how long do you think you have to pay premiums into that whole life insurance policy? A lot of times we think our whole life forever. What you'll find though, is we can fund a policy just for a few years. It can be five years, 10 years, a certain age. You can really customize it. You've got a lot of freedom there and you can set it up to be flexible from the start, which is fun. And then we've got the cash value. So here's the part that everyone's interested in. So when you look at the cash value of a whole life insurance policy, you'll see that no matter what happens in the economy, stock market, whatever, that value continues to go up. There's no risk. I've got strong guarantees associated with the, with the product. And I can also access it anytime I'd like, and I can access it tax-free, assuming I do so properly. How's that sound? Sounds pretty good. So with that said, why is life insurance often misunderstood? Well, firstly, there's a lot of mixed opinions about whole life insurance. Have you ever heard any of the following about whole life insurance? That it's a scam. It's a bad product. It's expensive. The cash value has weak returns. If you put money into this policy, you're going to have buyer's remorse or you're going to regret it. Have you ever heard that or have you ever seen anyone that, that's been, been through that before? Happens a lot. And there's two reasons why we hear this. One, because there is a lot of misinformation out there. But two, it can also be true at times. And we'll look at an example that illustrates that. But with that said, if there is truth to it, why do people with money, rich people, put a lot of money into cash value life insurance? Is it because they can afford to lose money, they can throw it away and just make it up later? No, they're just like you and me. They don't wanna waste money that they have. The thing is, 
you'll often see that they have advisors. If it's an if it's an individual, they often have tax attorneys that have a familiarity around cash value life insurance. If it's a corporation or a bank, they've got a board and there's members there that understand the product as well. Have you ever heard? I know it's a good idea if they're doing it. So if we see people that are one percenters putting money into cash value life insurance, something has to be there in light of all of the negativity we might hear too. So why do banks, corporations, and smart individuals position funds in, in cash value life insurance? And a hint, it's not about the death benefit. So here's a bank that we work with. This is one of our largest clients and they have deposited $20 million since they've started their policies. So it consisted of two purchases, one in 2020, one in 2021. But on the far right, we see the combined cash value and also combined death benefit. And this actually consists of, it's now almost 100 policies on multiple employees at the company. So that's how companies and banks will actually set these policies up. The bank owns everything, but they make the deposits and the cash values just grow over time. That's a smaller bank that we work with, but you might recognize some of these names. So if we look at Bank of America here, they're the largest when it comes to bank owned life insurance, which is cash value life insurance. This is a figure that was last updated in quarter three of 2023. So it was just over $24 billion in cash value holdings then. It's, a, it's likely a bit higher now. And we see Wells Fargo and JP Morgan with big amounts too. And it's not just banks that stockpile money into these products. So here's a couple of clients that we work with. One, we've got Christina and PJ, who are both uh, really nice. I met them a little over a year ago. They own a pharmaceutical business that generates eight figures plus per year. Their plan was to fund four policies with a total of $2 million per year. They've started three policies so far. Now, what they were interested in, specifically with whole life insurance, was 100% the cash value. And the main reasons why, one, was because it's a safe place they could position money, and two, it had really attractive tax benefits. They're in a high tax bracket, so if you do things right, you can access that cash value tax-free. That was very attractive to them. Now, they've been using their policy since they've started it, or their policies, I should say. So they're using it for their business, but a lot for real estate projects they've been working on. Really, they're using it as their own bank. And one of the first things they said when I connected with them was they're tired of working with banks. And a big reason why was just because of the paperwork, delays, all that stuff they didn't want to have to deal with anymore. Next, we've got Joe. So Joe's a nurse. He funds a policy with $10,000 per year. His yearly commitment, meaning the minimum, is about $1,100 per year. He wanted to start small, get comfortable with the product, and after he gained some experience, maybe get more policies for himself or his family member, family members. The key takeaway here is anyone can do this. It doesn't matter if we're someone that's putting in $2 million per year, if we're a bank, or for someone putting in 10K per year, and we're starting with less than 100 bucks per month, $1,100 per year in this case. We can set it up to be very flexible, which is nice, and still have maximum cash value. So question, why do people get life insurance when they say they don't care about the life insurance? Because we hear that at our company every single day. I don't care about the life insurance at all. Here's why. It's always the cash value. So when I look at the cash value of a whole life insurance policy, it'll increase every year, no risk. I've got strong guarantees. And again, I can access that cash value tax-free. Sound good? Definitely. So again, why does whole life insurance still have a bad reputation? Because it has for an extremely long time, well before Denzel and I were even, even born. Here's a quick story to illustrate it. This is a true story, by the way. It's about a guy named Doug. He is a doctor and he was interested in whole life insurance purely for the cash value. And one of the first things he said to the agent he worked with was, I want to put $100,000 per year into this whole life insurance policy. And again, why he was doing that was for the cash value. He wanted to grow it and then be able to use it. Everything that we saw Christina and PJ and Joe doing, like that's what he's interested in. Here's what he got, or here's what he was sold, I should say. So in red, 
we see that term base premium. Remember the chart in red, base premium and PUA? Here, it's only base premium, 100K per year. Look at your first year cash value, $3,500 and change. He paid 100K per year for 10 years. By year 10, he's paid a million. His cash value is almost $970,000. By year 11, he finally gets his money back. Pretend this is you. You're interested in a whole life insurance policy. You want you want it for cash value. You're told you're getting cash value, but then it takes 10 years to get your money back. More than that. How would you feel when we hear that it's a scam and people get ripped off? This is often why. And the reason why is because we're going to look at the exact same policy with the exact same company just set up differently. So on the right, see these arrows? Base premium, 10,000. Remember what it was in the last example? 100,000. We cut it down to one tenth, 10% 10 of what it was before. Then we see 90,000 going toward this PUA rider. Again, I like to call this a cash dumping. And then the dark blue is his out of pocket. So here's the amount he wanted to pay. He wasn't told here much. here's how much it costs. He can say, here's what I want to add, 100. First year, got almost 88,000. What's highlighted in yellow is when he gets his money back between years three and four instead of year 11. If we look at the far right in purple, this shows how much more you have in cash value with this product or this setup compared to the one to the left. And again, exact same policy with exact same company, same out of pocket for him, drastically different results. So the lesson here is really to make sure that the policy is set up the right way. This is the most important thing. Anytime I speak with anyone that has any experience with whole life insurance, where they have buyer's remorse, never has anything to do with loans, what the premium is. It's always how it was set up. It usually could have been set up, set up for more cash value. They found out after the fact. So if those charts felt overwhelming, here's a way we could simplify it a bit. If I'm you, here's what I would look for. If I put a dollar into a policy in the first year, I want to see between 80 and 90% of that dollar in cash value in the first year. And then I want to break even. That term means when I get all of my money back, somewhere between three to six years. And why it would range like that depends on the company and product that I might choose. But it's common to see a lot of products where I could get my money back between three and five years. So, before we continue on, a little bit about me. So if you don't know me, hello, my name's Steve. In my free time, I teach a little bit more than 35,000 people all about whole life insurance, and we have a lot of fun doing so. <laughs> I am the uh, founder and CEO of IBC Global. We currently serve uh, more than 2,000 clients, uh, but it's actually uh, a bit over 3,000 policies because a lot of people we work with will purchase more than just one whole life insurance policy for a variety of reasons. And one of our largest uh, clients that we service is a bank. It's the uh, bank that I had shared earlier with respect to their numbers and such. Yes, I promise it is all true. If you'd like to have a conversation about whole life insurance, I promise I will keep it interesting and anyone here at our company will do the same as well. <laughs> So before I started uh, IBC Global and started teaching about this, I did spend several years learning about it. Uh, it was one firm in particular. Uh, it was an executive benefits planning firm. What that firm did was set up cash value life insurance policies for corporations that are getting policies on their executives, and the cash value was really prioritized. So I learned a lot there to say the least, but what I really learned, we've got a couple things here. One, specific details on how to maximize the cash value from start to finish. How the wealthy and these corporations were structuring these policies. The next two points are huge. Which insurance companies to choose? The last one is the most important, in my opinion, seeing what the actual performance looks like on cash value of whole life insurance policies compared to illustrations, because this is a big problem in the industry and it has been for a long time. What I mean when I say that is if I show you a whole life insurance policy and 20 years from now, you see a million dollars in cash value and you're banking on that for retirement. All right, I'm going to have that. I'm going to be able to do everything I want with it. And then at that year 20 mark, your actual cash value is only $600,000. That 
has happened a lot with life insurance sales. So my point is, at working at that firm, a lot of conversations would always be had around historical performance and what companies actually deliver and don't just show good looking numbers on paper. And we've seen four companies consistently do so. I've seen four companies, uh, which are your four major mutuals, Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual. So what we'll cover is as follows. Number one, whole life insurance for the cash value. Want to take a look? Okay. Remember, Doug? So we saw what not to do, but then also what to do. Again, most important part here, whether you're paying in a hundred grand per year, like he is, or if it's 10,000, 5,000, whatever it might be, having that policy set up right from the get-go, one, creates a very cash-rich policy, but two, his policy here, he wanted to fund 100 grand per year. How much does he have to pay each year? What is he committed to here? Is it the 100? No. That term base premium is our commitment. So what a lot of people will do is take out policies like this, where they'll set it up where they're committed to a small amount that never feels like a burden, and then 100% at their discretion, they'll pour more money into the policy up to that maximum level that they set. We discuss it up front to make sure we don't bite off more than we can chew, but setting it up right is the most important piece. Next, your, your money goes nowhere but up over time. Now, normally, when we're going to position money in an asset, any asset class, if there's risk, there's reward. With a life insurance policy, the, the, the risk is extremely limited. The cash value in your whole life insurance policy is not invested in the stock market. You'll have a minimum guaranteed rate, but then you'll see a dividend interest rate. Dividends for 2024 range between about five and 6%. You'll see one company that's presently at 6.1%, that's mass mutual, but this is the general range you'll see again for 2024. And let's look at some rates here. So we've got Guardian, 5.9% for 2024, and then you've got mass mutual, at 6.1%. Quick side note on dividend rates. If I look at that dividend rate with Mass Mutual, if you have $100,000 in cash value and you see a 6.1% dividend rate, common sense would tell you and I that your cash value is going to grow by 6.1%, $6,100. However, that is not the case. And that's important to, to always be aware of upfront Anytime we see an interest rate with any life insurance product, a good thing just to be aware of is that's always a gross rate that's applied to your policy after the insurance expenses. To get the true net, the questions I want to ask is, what's my yearly rate of return or what's my internal rate of return? And we can hit on that more during the Q&A. A little bit about Guardian, who of the four major mutuals is actually the smallest, but they're still a massive size company. They have paid dividends. Every year since 1868, if you don't want to do the math, that's a little bit more than 160 years. And in 2008, their dividend rate was 7.25%. And in 2021, they cracked $1.1 billion in total dividends paid. It's continued to increase. And we have seen that with most life insurance carriers. So again, whole life insurance, why people get it for the cash value. Here is a story from Bob. And I heard this when I was at that executive benefits planning firm. So Bob had owned a large construction company, and he actually had seven whole life insurance policies, some of which were older than me when he said this. So he had had them for a long time. What he said was this, aside from the interest in my company, meaning the his business interest, what he owned, my whole life insurance policies have been my best performing asset. Every year, my money increases. Last year, I paid a $12,000 premium for one of my policies, and the cash value increased by almost $40,000. What he really liked about it was that it was a peace of mind product. No matter what happened, his value just continued to appreciate over time. So here's a popular strategy we see quite a bit with individuals that have excess cash in the bank. So Excess cash is all relative to, to you and your specific situation. But if someone has money in the bank and it's in there because it's safe and easy to access, what we'll often see is someone will, someone will move some of that excess cash into a policy over a short period of time. 
maybe three to five years. And after that, they say, I don't want to have to be on the hook to make more payments. If I like it, I'll add more. But my plan is to take this money here, move it into the policy, and I'm done. And you can do exactly that. So we've got some examples here. If someone's got 50,000, 500,000, 5 million, it doesn't matter. We can move it into a policy, in this case, over five years, sometimes less, less uh, a shorter number of years, sometimes more, depends on your situation. Let's look at an example of this. So here we've got Lance, and this is someone that started a policy with us back in 2019. On the left, we have the original projection, the original illustration. So his plan was to pay in 120K per year for five years. That's $600,000. On the right is what actually happened. So he paid what he said he was going to pay, which doesn't always happen and that's okay, but he did. We've got his cash value. What's highlighted in yellow there is his break-even point when he got his money back. So he's got maximum cash value year one, 105 in cash value. That, by the way, is the biggest drawback to whole life insurance, that upfront hit. When people ask that question, it is the upfront hit. That's the, the worst part about any policy. But here, it is maximized in the first year to minimize that upfront hit. Took between three to four years to get his money back, and it keeps on compounding. So when we look at this, again, it's a real policy. He got his money back between three and four years. At the end of year four, he's moved $480,000 into the policy. He's got 485, pays nothing extra after five years. Now he has mentioned that he probably will keep adding because he likes it, but the plan was to stop and he easily can, but his cash value keeps on growing. When you look at that cash value growth, it's growing by 10, 20, $30,000 per year. And that's when he's not paying anything in. So the constant compounding is constant. <laughs> so a question that comes up sometimes is, what if I don't have $120,000 per year to put in a policy? Like, will it still work for me? Or is this only for rich people and banks, people that have a lot of money? So the answer is, it can work with any amount of money. The most important piece, though, just to reiterate this, is that the policy must, must, must be set up for high cash value from day one. If it's not, that's where people have buyer's remorse and we might end up feeling like, like Doug did, who was sold that policy with low cash value from the get-go. So we'll look at a few examples here quick of people paying in $500 a month, 10K per year, and 30K per year, all of which will be maximized for cash value. First, $500 a month. So we've got 6K per year divided by 12, that's 500 a month. This is based on a 30-year-old female, and she funds up until the age of 65. Last payment is at 64, and she has just about $500,000 in cash value when she retires. We're going to come back to this policy later, too. Next, we've got a 40-year-old male paying $10,000 per year. He pays for a total of 10 years, so he gets a total of $100,000 into the policy in retirement call it in his 60s and 70s, he has several hundred thousand dollars in cash value, along with a death benefit that continues to grow income tax-free as well. And again, no payments after year 10. Then we've got a 50-year-old individual that wants to fund the policy a bit more aggressively up until age 65, 30K per year, gets his money back between years four and five, doesn't pay anything after year 15. And look at this. This is year 16 right here. The cash value growth that year, when he paid nothing in, was $30,000. That's what he had paid in every year. Now it's growing by what he paid. So it's growing on its own, which is so sweet when you look at the values, keep on uh, compounding. My point to mentioning all of this is it can work with any amount of money. It's just really modeling it and looking at different companies and products to really see what works best for you in your particular situation. So next, we're going to cover the fun part. Ready? Using a policy like your own bank. So let's have some fun when we illustrate this. Let's pretend that you want to buy a car. Pretend it's a cool one. I, I like cars. So I'm not going to use any model. Whatever car you want to get the most, however much it costs, you probably know that. So you want to buy a car. And let's pretend that you want to buy it in cash, but you don't have the cash. So what would you have to do? We have to save enough money until we can pay for the car in cash. Then after we buy that car, concerning our bank account, we would just refill it. 
and then buy another car later or do something else with it. But we fill the bank account, drain it, and then refill it and continue to practice that. What if you wanted that car, but you didn't want to wait? You said, I don't want to have to wait until I save enough money. I want the car now. <laughs> Instant gratification, right? <laughs> we all may have been there at some point. Those who are disciplined, I commend you. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> so if you want the car right now, you'd go to a bank, right? Or a lender. Maybe it's a finance institution. Same thing. That bank will say, okay, we will loan you the money to purchase the car. You, they'll set the terms and payment schedule. You'll pay the bank back their money along with interest. Simply put, you get the car, the bank gets the money. Now, how do you use a cash value life insurance policy as your own bank as an alternative to what we just saw? So going back to this, step one, if you wanted to buy that car in cash, what would you have to do? Save, save the money first. With a cash value life insurance policy, it's the same thing. We have to save the money first by building that cash value up, whether we're doing something like the 30-year-old female did, a small amount, and we're consistently adding to build it up, or if we have a lump sum we're throwing in there. It does require, though, that we add money to it to capitalize it, if you want to call it that, just like we would with a bank account. So first, it requires funding the policy. And then second, we take a loan against the cash value. So using the cash value like your own bank, how it works when we take loans or borrow against it is what happens, you continue to get dividends still on your total cash value, regardless of how much you take out. It's a lot like real estate, if you're experienced there. If you've got a $100,000 property, say it's appreciating by 5%, the actual property value that is, if you have a $50,000 mortgage outstanding, you'll pay loan interest to the bank. However, that 5% appreciation, does it occur only on your remaining equity or on your entire property value? The entire property value, it all keeps on compounding. So let's go through an example of a policy. First, I'll just add some points and then we'll look at an actual illustration. So let's pretend like that real estate example. You've got 100 grand in cash value. Assume it's growing by 5%. 5% of 100,000 is $5,000. You decide to take a $50,000 policy loan because you want the cool car. <laughs> Let's assume that the loan interest rate is 5%, which is common today. We see a lot of loan rates between 5 and 6%. 5% of 50,000 is $2,500. When you take a loan against a life insurance policy, the interest on that loan is paid to the insurance company. Now, you've got cash value that you haven't borrowed of 50K. You continue to earn that 5% interest still in the full $100,000. So you're still receiving compounding on your entire bucket of money as if you never touched it in the first place. This is how people will often use it as their own bank. Let's look at an example of this. So, We've got two illustrations side by side. On the left, where our, our arrow is pointing, here we aggressively funded a policy for five years, then never pay another penny into it. Look at the first year cash value. It's 92%. The same thing would work here if he's paying in 10K per year, about 92%. Year five, I'm sorry, year six, we've got about 535 in cash value and our death benefit is 1.8. Okay, then we take a $300,000 loan. Look what happens to your cash value and death benefit. They drop by how much? The amount of the loan. The death benefit drops by exactly $300,000. Cash value drops by a little bit more. And the reason why, it's the 300K loan plus the loan interest for next year. It's accounting for that. But when we borrow, we see the cash value and death benefit reduced. However, what happens if we do pay it back? Not when, but if. So down here, we see when you're 58 years old, there's your cash value death benefit if you never touch it. You're going to repay it at 50K per year. Of your 50K per year, what's in purple is applied toward the principal and red is applied toward interest. You don't have to pay it at 50K per year. You've got complete control over how and when you do. But here it's paid by age 58 and look at your cash value and death benefit. Go back to the no loan example and back to this. They're the same. So your money has continued to compound for you all the way through. The cost 
is the cost of the loan interest. That is the true cost to borrow when we look at a life insurance policy. So to recap that point, using a cash value life insurance policy like our own bank, why and how does it work? Well, our money keeps on compounding. We've got control of the payments, not a bank. When you repay it, your cash value is fully restored. So it kept on moving forward for you all the way through. And excuse me, in summary, it's always growing. Some examples of how people use policies as their own bank. What are they financing? We see it a lot with real estate investors, a lot with entrepreneurs who are using it for their business. Some will use it for college planning. Some like to have fun and buy cars. And then the legacy planning side of things, that has more to do with a the family office concept and generational wealth, but you'll see families use the cash value while they are alive using the policy. And then, and then that death benefit comes back to the family income tax-free. Again, what we're doing here is using the cash value that we've built up over time instead of going to a bank. The reason why is because I've got control, meaning I don't have to pay it back at the bank's terms. And also, it keeps on compounding for me. That's the reasons why people are typically attracted. And if you are a numbers person, what I like to look at is what is the actual cash value growth each year? And then compare that to the actual loan interest you're paying the insurance company to make sure that you're not in the red. Or if we are, we get out of the red quickly. So let's wrap up with the last point here. What about tax-free income? So with a whole life insurance policy, why people use whole life insurance to generate tax-free income, well, I should say they use it for income. One is because it is tax-free, which I gave that away. But then second, remember I've got guarantees associated with the policy. It's not invested in the market. A lot of times people we work with do have other income sources set up in retirement and they're using this as a piece of the puzzle or a piece of their portfolio. The reason why is because of the tax-free piece in case tax brackets change, and then also the guarantees. I've got some assurance as far as what I'm going to have. So again, someone will say, I really like the tax advantages and guarantee that I'm going to have money in retirement. Remember this, a 30-year-old that paid $500 per month, and when she retired at 65, she had about $500,000 in cash value. Let's take some income from this. So here we go. She's going to take, starting at age 66 in this example, $2,000 per month. Here's what I want to hit on. If we go back, she's paid 6 k per year up until age 65. How much did she pay out of pocket? Total. This column, total funding, tells us that. So if this is you and you pay $500 a month for 35 years, you would have paid a total of $210,000. So now when she takes income, this column called total outlay, $210,000, but the next year goes down to 186. The reason why is because she's pulled $24,000. So she paid 210 total in, now she's starting to take money out. When it goes into the red, that means she's pulled more money from the policy than what she's paid in. So at the end of this, at 95 years old, we see negative $510,000. That means she got her $210,000 back plus another $510,000. It was all income tax-free, provided we didn't mess it up, which we can talk about later. But we can often get significantly more back than what we paid in. Here's a bigger policy. He's starting, or we're starting here at year 20. He's already paid in $1.5 million. He's going to take $150,000 per year out. So again, look at that total payments column. When he pulls $150 per year out, you'll see that total payments column decreased by $150 per year. So $150,000 times 10 years is $1.5 million. He paid in $1.5 million. So at age 74, he got all of his money back. At age 74, he still has $2.65 million in cash value and $3.65 million in death benefit. And he keeps on pulling money out until he gets an additional $3 million. At that point, he's 95 years old and still has money left in the policy. So here's a question. Is it always tax-free? The answer is no. We can mess it up. And this is always a point I like to, to hit on. You may have heard me say, or, or you may have picked up on it a couple of times, that I say tax-free if done so properly. Here it is. Your cash value can be accessed tax-free if, if, if done so properly. 
So when you look at a life insurance policy, there are IRS limits or IRS rules. The IRS looks at our policy and really they have a guideline that allows them to determine, is this life insurance policy going to be viewed as life insurance in our eyes or as a taxable investment? If it becomes a taxable investment, the cash value can then be taxable, specifically the gains when we pull the money out. The name for this limit is called a modified endowment contract, or I should say a taxable event is a modified endowment contract. Your policy can become this. The short version of this is a MEC. And if it does become a MEC, what happens is your cash value still grows tax deferred, but anything you access with respect to the gains, you have to pay ordinary income tax on. And if you're under the age of 59 and a half, you're, you would have to pay a 10% penalty tax. So we don't want that to occur. We're going to prevent it if possible. And there are other cases where taxes can occur with a non-MEC policy. It's very easy to prevent, but that is something we do make sure we really educate on because you never want that to happen. With all of that said, it is very easy to prevent a MEC because we have what's called a MEC limit. We set it, we set it up uh, with your policy on day one. You'll see that it has a direct relationship to the death benefit. Very easy to prevent a MEC. And even if it does happen, it's usually pretty easy to reverse, provided we catch it early. A lot of info there. Let's quickly recap, and then we'll get into the Q&A. So now that you've learned all about cash value life insurance, not all about, but <laughs> a lot of the basics, do you see, firstly, why people get whole life insurance because of the cash value when they say, I don't care about the death benefit. Do you see how you could use a policy like your own bank, specifically how you can take loans against the cash value and still have it compound for you? This way, your money's still at work instead of the bank's money still at work while, while they collect interest off of you. And then three, do you see how you can take tax-free income in retirement?